Rio de Janeiro looks for a logo for World Youth Day 2013. Bishop Gary Gordon looks for a few good priests for Northern Canada. And we talk about addiction to pornography. Good evening, I'm Alicia Ambrosio. Young people around the world are still recovering from the World Youth Day that just wrapped up in Madrid over a month ago, but the Archdiocese of Rio de Janeiro is already thinking of 2013 and the World Youth Day that will be held there. Today, the Archdiocese of Rio announced that they will hold a contest to find the official World Youth Day 2013 logo. The announcement was made as the Archbishop of Rio, Orani João Tempesta, blessed the headquarters of World Youth Day Rio. In Canada, Bishop Gary Gordon has a unique, one-time only, can't-miss, double-your-money-back sales pitch for priests. Speaking to priests across southern Canada, Bishop Gordon is promoting the Diocese of Whitehorse, which is in need of priests. Among the benefits the bishop is promoting is time to read books, to reflect on one's work, and to take time to take a second look at one's homilies. He said Whitehorse offers the small, basic Christian community and a calmness that is essential for priests to live out their vocation. Bishop Gordon said he is looking for high-spirited priests willing to get back to basics. And joining me today on set is Matt Fratt, a lay minister on a mission to educate people about the negative effects of pornography, especially addiction. He runs a website called The Porn Effect with resources for those trying to change their lifestyle. So welcome to the set, Matt. Thank you very much. So first of all, what is pornography? What do you consider pornography? That, that's a good question. Um, I think if we allow the word to mm -hmm. define itself rather than imposing upon it our own desensitized definitions of what we think porn is, we see that pornography actually comes from two Greek words, porne and, and graph pain which would literally mean the writing and drawing of the prostitutes. Oh. Yeah, and I think if, if I was to kind of put side by side, you know, a, a prostitute on a street with some of the billboards that we see, you know, from, from Guess and American Apparel and all that junk, can I say that one? Um, <laughs> you just did. <laughs> yeah, like I think you'd be hard pressed to figure out who was the prostitute and who wasn't. So I think pornography is far more prevalent that we th than we think. What we once called hardcore, we now call softcore, what we once called softcore, we now call halftime at the Super Bowl, right. you know? But I think it's, it's a good thing to uh, keep in mind that, you know, if you were to compare Hefner's bunnies in the Playboy Mansion mm -hmm. to Michelangelo's nudes in the Sistine Chapel, mm -hmm. clearly there's a difference. One is a, a pimp who, um, I would say, degrades the person through the body. The other is an artist which uses the body to extol the person. Right. And I think that's important to, to mm -hmm to understand because we can never fall into the trap of thinking that the problem with pornography is sex or naked people. Right. That's not the problem. Right. Yeah. It's the intent. It's also the intent. Yeah. I'd say it's the intention of the, of the uh, pornographer or artist and the intention of the viewer. You know, right. someone could go into the Sistine Chapel and lust, but that wouldn't mean there was a problem with Michelangelo's paintings. There would be a problem with the person. Okay. Yeah. And you've created a website called The Porn Effect. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the website. Okay. Well, um, I was... Uh, <clears throat> laying in bed one night, I woke up at 3 a.m. and I just got this idea to, I wanted to create a website and like record my testimony because I had struggled with stuff in the past and, and, um, and make a pamphlet, you know, and I was very aware that none of these things were revolutionary or new and uh, had been done before, but I just couldn't get the idea out of my mind and so I, I got up late at night and I, I began to pray about it and the next day I went down to my office and started up a cheap little site, like a hundred bucks it cost me, you know. Um, and I just started kind of sharing my story. And what was interesting is I got a lot of attention from, from fathers with a lot of chil children, um, women who struggled with pornography. I did an interview with the BBC about this. And so this was this cheap little website that was generating some interest. And so uh, thanks to the donation of a, of a kind priest in Dublin, Ireland, Ireland, um, yeah, he gave me 12 grand and we just wow. made the website look terrific. And so that's it. I mean, it's, it, we, we try our best to reach out to men who struggle with pornography, women who struggle with pornography, married couples, you know, who are affected by this, mm -hmm. and just try and offer resources. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not rocket science. It's just sort of, we have monthly articles from ex-porn stars mm -hmm. and men who struggle with porn, women who struggle with porn. We have a video library, a free audio library, wow. where you can find like free audio from Christopher West and Jeff Cavins who have given their okay. stuff to us. And Perfect. And the website address? Uh, ThePornEffect.com. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you You're so welcome. much for joining us. You're welcome.
That's all for Perspectives tonight. Don't forget to stay tuned for Catholic Focus.